Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about the relative reactivity of various carboxylic acid derivatives. Now, carboxylic acid derivatives basically refers to a family of molecules that are all related to the carboxylic acid. Uh, this includes acid chloride and hydrides, esters, and amines or amines. They're all related to the parent carboxylic acid. And they all undergo a common reaction, which is the nucleophilic acyl substitution. Now, the schematic of this reaction is shown here, where a carboxylic acid derivative, I'm using a Z to represent uh, pretty much any of these carboxylic acid derivatives, because Z could be a chlorine, and that would be an acid chloride. It could be a carboxylate ion, and then it would be uh, an hydride or an ester or an amide. So the Z is used to basically uh, refer to like any of these carboxylic acid derivatives. So when a nucleophile attacks a carboxylic acid derivative, it undergoes a substitution. And since the substitution happens at the acyl carbon, this, process, this reaction is called a nucleophilic acyl substitution. And essentially what happens is the nucleophile substitutes for the Z and the Z gets kicked out. Now that the fact that we have various carboxylic acid derivatives, does that mean that they all react equally well in this reaction? Uh, that means they react equally fast uh, or like equally slow, whatever that might be. Like what are the relative rates? Does one of them react faster than the other ones? And the simple answer to that is yes. Uh, it turns out acid chlorides, these are the most reactive of carboxylic acid derivatives. And then anhydrides, esters, and amides. So essentially, the reactivity increases in this order. Okay, this is increasing reactivity for a nucleophilic acyl substitution. And again, to put it into simple language, what that means is if you have an acid chloride and an amide, the acid chloride is going to react much faster, probably violently in some cases, compared to the amide, which may not react or might react really slow. And a classic example is the hydrolysis of these, uh, of these compounds, of these derivatives. So an acid chloride, can react with water and at room temp very violently, okay? And what that produces is a carboxylic acid plus HCl gas. That's the product. So the hydroxyl from here substitutes for the chlorine. So this is a violent reaction. And amide on the other hand, would not react with water under ambient conditions. So if you take some amide along with water at room temperature, it's just going to sit there, no reaction. In fact, to react an amide, and if you want to do a hydrolysis, okay, and these are both examples of hydrolysis reactions that you are considering here. If you want the amide to react, you have to use either a strong acid or a strong base. One of the two is required and with a lot of heating probably to react the amide and then you would get the carboxylic acid and then depending on whether it's an acidic or a basic condition you might get like ammonium ion or you may have ammonia okay uh, under those conditions and again so the outcome really depends on what conditions you're using. If you're using a basic condition, you're going to have a carboxylate ion, then you might have ammonia. Uh, if you're using acidic conditions, then you would have the carboxylic acid and you would have ammonium ions uh, like that. So essentially what I'm trying to say is you have one reaction that's like really fast, very violent, and the other one is slow. That means there is a difference in the reactivity. One reacts fast, and the other reacts really slow. 
And so that's what we mean by increasing reactivity. So acid chlorides, they are the most reactive among the carboxylic acid derivatives. What we're going to do in this video is dig into some reasons as to why that's the case. Why are acid chlorides most reactive? Why are amides the least reactive? And why does it follow this reactivity order? So the relative reactivity of these carboxylic acid derivatives can be understood uh, in electronic terms, okay, by considering the electronic nature of the molecule and the electrophilicity at the acyl carbon. They both contribute to it. So let's look at them one by one. So if we consider uh, an acid chloride, what we know from before is that the acyl carbon is electrophilic in all of these carboxylic acid derivatives. And you can cite two reasons for the electrophilicity of this acyl carbon. Uh, one is inductive effects, and the other one is resonance. Okay, so because the carbon is connected to two electronegative elements, chlorine and oxygen, they are both inductively pulling away electron density. Okay, so the chlorine is more electronegative, the oxygen is more electronegative, they will pull away electron density from that acyl carbon. And that would apply for any of these carboxylic acid derivatives. Additionally, there is a resonance reason because the oxygen here is electrophilic or, or electronegative, so you can draw a resonance form. And the first resonance form for an acid chloride is going to look like that with a formal charge on that carbon. And so you notice there is a formal positive charge on that carbon, the acyl carbon, which says that there is uh, electrophilic character to that carbon atom. But we are not done here though, okay? There's more that we can do with resonance. The chlorine here has lone pairs on it. So in principle, we can draw an additional resonance form for it, where we use the lone pair on the oxygen atom, such that we get O minus and a positive charge on the chlorine. So we can draw three resonance forms for an acid chloride. Now, are these all significant resonance forms? The answer is no, especially this last resonance form, okay? This is not a significant contributor, okay? This is a minor contributor to resonance. And why is that? Because this bond that we formed, the double bond that we formed here, the pi bond, that involves the overlap of a carbon p orbital with a chlorine p orbital. Okay, so the pi bond here, the pi bond is formed by the overlap of a carbon's p orbital with a chlorine p orbital. And recollect that that's how all pi bonds are formed, uh, at least for organic molecules, the second row elements. They're formed by the overlap, second and third row elements, sorry. They're formed by the overlap of p orbitals. So we have a carbon p orbital overlapping with a chlorine p orbital. And because carbon uses a 2p orbital and while chlorine uses a 3p orbital, the overlap is not that strong. They are not able to overlap effectively, which weakens this pi bond. So it's, that's why this pi bond is really weak. And hence this resonance form is not a significant contributor to the overall resonance here, which means for the acid chloride, we can pretty much limit ourselves to these two resonance forms where the positive charge uh, is there on the uh, acyl carbon and the carbon has an enhanced electrophilic nature. Okay, the positive charge is not spread out onto the chlorine atom. Let's look at the ester and the amide and see how resonance can help us understand why the acid chloride is more reactive. Going back to the ester now. For the ester, we can again draw some resonance forms. 
So we can draw the first resonance form by pushing off those electrons. And that's the first resonance form. We can draw another resonance form where we engage the lone pair on that oxygen. Minus, plus, and one lone pair. And so now if we look at all the three resonance forms, the positive charges sort of spread between that electrophilic carbon and the oxygen. And the pi bond here for the ester, this pi bond is formed by the overlap between a carbon's 2p orbital and an oxygen's 2p orbital. And since these are both 2p orbitals, they're going to have a good amount of overlap. So that means that pi bond would have uh, stability to it. But uh, this resonance form also lands the positive charge on an oxygen atom. An oxygen is an electronegative element. It's really not happy. I mean, it can accommodate the positive charge, but that's not the best thing that it wants. It would not want to have a positive charge on it. So that sort of like uh, decreases the, the, the stability uh, or the overall contribution of this resonance form to the overall resonance in the molecule, which means that this form here where there is a positive charge on that acyl carbon is still like a major resonance form or it is the most significant contributor. And so there is a significant positive, but this one is better than the chlorine one because this involved overlap between a 2p orbital and a 3p orbital. Whereas here we have an overlap between two 2p orbitals. So that's better than the acyl chloride. Now moving on to the amide. If you consider the amide, we can draw similar resonance forms where we have the positive charge on the acyl carbon. And now we can engage the nitrogen lone pair in resonance to give us the third resonance form where the nitrogen would have a formal positive charge. Now, similar to the case of ester, the pi bond here is formed by the overlap between a carbon's 2p orbital and a nitrogen's 2p orbital. So in terms of strength, the bond strength should be very similar to the carbon-oxygen 2p orbital. At least they are both 2p orbitals, so they should be able to get maximum overlap and maximize the overlap. Now, additionally, notice in this third resonance form, the positive charge is now on a nitrogen. And compared to the oxygen, nitrogen is significantly, or it is less electronegative. Uh, it is less electronegative, which means it is more welcoming of that positive charge. It can actually stabilize or hold that positive charge on it, which means this resonance form now becomes a better contributor to the overall resonance of the molecule. Okay, so it is going to be a, a, a better contributor, more than this one, and much better than this one. Okay, so what we see is that the contribution of this third resonance form that we are drawing increases in going from the acid chloride to the ester and then to the amide, in which case this is the best. And what this third resonance form does is it takes away the positive charge from that acyl carbon. It removes the acyl car positive charge from the acyl carbon. And so because of that, the electrophilicity of that acyl carbon is the least, okay? This acyl carbon here is the least electrophilic. Whereas the acyl carbon in case of the acid chloride this is the most electrophilic, okay? So that is one reason why acid chlorides are the most reactive among the carboxylic acid derivatives, while amides 
or amides are the least reactive among carboxylic acid derivatives. So this is one explanation of why uh, of, of the difference in reactivity between uh, the carboxylic acid derivative. Now let's consider the leaving group ability uh, and how that affects uh, the relative reactivity of these carboxylic acid derivatives. And what I've put down here is basically a generalized reaction that involves various carboxylic acid derivatives and a generalized nucleophile. So we're looking at the reaction of a carboxylic uh, of an acid chloride with a nucleophile, the reaction of an anhydride with a nucleophile, the reaction of an ester with a nucleophile, and the reaction of an amide with a nucleophile. Now, in each of these cases, when the nucleophile reacts with these carboxylic acid derivatives, we're going to make the same product, which is this molecule here. The nucleophile will substitute for the Z in all of these cases. And look at what the Z is, okay? That's the leaving group that's coming out in all of these cases. And what you can notice is the leaving group ability of these species very widely. The chloride here is the best leaving group, okay? This is the best leaving group, and this is the worst leaving group. So the leaving group ability increases as you go from the amide to the halide or the chloride in this particular case. Or in the other words, you can say that the leaving group ability decreases in going from the chloride to the amide, the NH2 minus. And that gets reflected in the relative reactivity, although it is a minor contributor because based on reaction profiles, uh, it seems like the nature of that leaving group is, is really not crucial here because this happens in a step that's after the rate determining step and it is an exothermic step. So based on Hammond's postulate, the nature of the leaving group is not a significant contributor, but that's another thing that you can track, okay? Another parameter that you can track to understand why acid chlorides are the most reactive and amides are the least reactive of carboxylic acid derivatives. So that was a review and an overview of the, uh, there was a review of the nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction and an overview of the relative reactivity of carboxylic acid derivatives. Why the acid chloride is the most reactive of the carboxylic acid derivatives and the amide is the least reactive of all carboxylic acid derivatives. I hope you find this video helpful.